In this video, we're gonna cover how to install XBSX2 2.0 on Xbox Series X and S. All right, everybody, Sir Mangler is at it again and has released an updated build of XBSX2, which has brought it in line with current master builds of PCSX2, added retro achievement support, retro pass support, and online network play. So basically everything you want out of a PCSX2 port. So in this video, we're gonna cover how to get it installed and get your BIOS and game directories configured and set up with additional videos to come showing more setup steps. But let's go ahead and dive in. Now, as we get started with the XBSX2 2.0 setup process, there are a couple things you're going to need. The first of which is an Xbox that is in dev mode. So if you haven't gotten your Xbox set up for dev mode, link in the description below will bring you to my Xbox Series X and S emulation playlist and you could get dev mode set up using my very first video in here for how to set up RetroArch. Goes over the dev mode activation process and then shows how to install RetroArch. Both pretty handy if you're interested in emulating on the Xbox. Now, as part of this setup process, I show you how to manually format a USB drive to properly work with Xbox emulation. If you want an easier way of getting that USB drive set up, check out the easiest USB drive setup guide that I have right below it. This will get you a properly formatted USB drive in NTFS with security permissions that you need for all Xbox emulation projects. So again, link to the playlist will be in the description below. Now we are going to download the latest release of XBSX2 2.0. As of this video, we are on version 2.0.1. If it is a newer version, grab that. But link to Sir Mangler's GitHub will be in the description below. So just grab the latest release. And for Xbox Series X and S owners, you wanna make sure you grab the one that is avx2.appx. Now get your Xbox booted up into dev mode and make note of your Xbox's remote access IP address and then just get booted into your Xbox device portal over on your PC or other internet enabled device. Now, as always, if you get a message about your connection not being private, you can just click on the advance button and tell it to continue anyway. Once you are loaded into the device portal, under my games and apps, click on add. Now you can drag your XBSX2 2.0 AppX bundle into the box here or click on choose file, doesn't matter either way, but just navigate to the directory where you have the AppX stored, so there we go. Mine's on my desktop, it's ready to go. So once it's selected, click on next. There's no dependencies to choose here, so click on start. And there we go, XBSX 2.0 is now installed. So just click on done there. And we can go ahead and close out of the Xbox device portal. We don't need it anymore. But now back over on your Xbox, navigate down to your newly installed XBSX 2.0 install here. Press your view back, whatever you want to call it, button here to bring up the little details menu. Click on view details and change the UWP type from app to game. Otherwise it will just not work as well as you would hope. And once that setting's changed, I always like to restart the console just to make sure it takes effect. This is probably not necessary, but I just like doing it anyway because it's one of my hangups. So there we go. All right, and with that, XBSX 2.0 is installed and ready to go. So let's go ahead and move on to USB drive setup. So now back over on your computing device of choice that can read NTFS formatted drives, just go ahead and get your Xbox USB drive inserted and opened up. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new XBSX2 folder that we will use to store things like our BIOS files, saves, and other emulation settings. So I'm just gonna create a new folder here Name it XBSX2. Now, there are a number of folders that we're going to want to make here. So I have some recommended folders that you'll want to put on USB drive as well as optional ones if you desire. So as you can see, there's not many optional ones. But anyway, inside the XBSX2 folder, I want to make a new folder for my BIOS files. Saves. Save states. Game covers, if you're going to be using this and as your just normal front end instead of something like Launch Pass. And again, if you want to have the optional folders in here as well, you can create a cache folder. And there we go. So again, I have 
folders I'd recommend running from USB and then those optional ones. So just make them as you see fit for your own personal setups. But now let's go ahead and populate our BIOS folder with a proper PS2 BIOS. So PS2 BIOS files are required for PS2 emulation and there's a number of ways to go about getting them. If you have a modded PS2, have a video on how to do that. If you have an unmodded Slim, I have a video on how to get a BIOS file from that one. And if you don't even own an original PS2 anymore, there is a way to get PS1 and 2 BIOS files directly from PS3 firmware using RPCS3. So if you have an RPCS3 emulation set up on your computer, you can get a PS2 BIOS file from it super easily. So I'll have a link to these three videos in the description below, and you can easily grab a PS2 BIOS using your preferred method. Or, you know, you can always resort to Google and do things that way. I really don't care, but as always, illegal download links are not provided on this channel. So you are going to need to source your own PS2 BIOS files using one of these methods. So my PS2 BIOS folder I have here on my desktop, I have my PS2 Slim BIOS file, my PS2 Fat BIOS file, and then the PS2 BIOS file found within the PS3 firmware. So technically, I only need one of these files to run with PS2 emulation, but I'm going to just go ahead and copy all three over into my new XBSX2 BIOS folder. And there they are. And with that, we have our BIOS files that we could set up on the emulator side in just a moment. Next, you're going to need to source some PS2 games. If you happen to still have a large physical collection of PS2 games, I have a couple of videos available on how to back them up. So this first video uses image burn and this second video uses the media preservation front end. So links to these will be in the description below. Otherwise, again, you can resort to Google and do things that way. Again, don't really care how you manage to find your PS2 games. You're just gonna need to source them using either one of these two methods or searching through Google. Illegal download links are not provided on this channel. But once you have your PS2 games sourced, they can be in a variety of formats. ISO and BinQ are going to be the standard. If you'd like to convert them down to CHUD format to save on space, that is actually quite an easy process as well that I will demonstrate for you now. So I have a PS2 ISO to CHUD format folder already created and stored on my Dropbox. Link to this will be in the description below, but just go ahead and get it downloaded. And once it's formatted, just go ahead and get it extracted. So I'm just going to do that right there. And inside the folder, you'll see chudman.exe and then ps2 iso to chud.bat. So what we're gonna do is just drag these two files into our ps2 game directory. And now we're gonna run the bat file and it will automatically convert all of my remaining iso games into chud format to save on space. So it's already started and getting to work. So I'm just gonna sit here for a second and wait for it to do its thing. All right, there we go. The conversion process has completed and as you can see, it can save quite a bit of space or not as much space as you'd think depending on the game in question. But with the conversion process complete, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete my original ISO files. I have them backed up somewhere else so I don't need them in this folder. I'm also gonna delete the PS2 ISO to chud.bat. Excellent. And with that, my PS2 games are now ready to be copied over to my USB drive. So you can store your games wherever you'd like. I personally just keep all my games inside of a games folder here at the root of the drive, so that way they're all in one easy to find location. So I'm just gonna tell them to copy over and we will wait for it to do its thing. All right, and with that transfer finished, just gonna close out of that folder here. Now there is one more optional step we could do before we move over to the actual Xbox console if desired, and that is to set up cover art for our PS2 games. So in our XBSX2 folder, we made a covers folder here. And if we added cover art matching our file name of the game, it should populate as we move over to XBSX2. So I'm just gonna do a couple of example options here because I don't wanna spend time doing all of them. So I'm just gonna grab a couple real quick. So one of my favorite methods of obtaining cover art is to head over to GameFAQs, search up the game in question. I want the PS2 version here. They have a media section here, boxes and it has box arts for most of the released versions of the game. So let's see here, PS2 US right here, there we go. So I'm just gonna grab this one and save it as, there we go. So now it's sitting here on my desktop, so I'm just gonna grab the file name that I have for it and paste it in and add it to my covers folder. 
So same process, Ace Combat 4, media, boxes, PS2, US, save image, there we go. Grab the game name, apply it to my cover art, and drag it in, and there we go. That should do it for my examples for now. So if you want to add the covers for all of your games, you can just go through and do that however you see fit. But anyway, with our BIOS and games and optional cover art added, we are ready to move over to the Xbox. So unplug your USB drive from your computing device and get it hooked back up to your Xbox Series X or S. All right, so over on the Xbox, let's head down to XBSX 2.0 and get it booted up for the first time. And there we go. So a couple things to get sorted first. So let's go ahead and start with the games list and get our games folders populated. So by pressing A on the games list, that'll bring you to this screen and you'll see it's a little empty, that's fine. Press your right bumper twice to get over to the games list settings and we're gonna add in a search setting for our games. So just press A on parent directory a couple of times until you get to the root directory listing here and we are going to navigate to E for our USB drive. Now just navigate to wherever you have your PS2 games stored on this drive. So I have mine in the games folder here under PS2 games. And once you get to the directory you wanna use, click on use this directory. And then just give it a minute while it scans everything. And then you can choose a default view for your game. So if you wanna have the games list or the games grid, I prefer the games list myself. Then you could sort it by type, title, last played, file size, I like title. And then we could set up a covers directory. So same deal here, just click on parent directory until you get to the root of your file structure. Click on E, go into your XBSX2 folder and choose your cover art folder and tell it to use this directory. And once you have this set, you can just press left bumper to go back to your games list and you'll see that it is now populated. And if you put in cover arts, you'll see them pop up over here on the right as well. So there's my Nightfire and Ace Combat 4. And again, those are the only two I did for my example. So those are the only two of cover art. But you should see that your games list is now populated on both tabs here. So if you prefer the game view or the list view, there you go. But we can't quite play these yet because we need to set our BIOS directory. So just go ahead and press B to go back out to the XBSX 2.0 main menu here. Man, move your D-pad around until the uh, selection option reappears, but head down to settings and that'll start us out on interface settings. So press right bumper once to bring us to the BIOS settings. So we're going to change our search directory for our BIOS files. So same thing as with the games, we're just gonna click on parent directory here until we get to the main file structure. Go to E, go to your XBSX2 folder, go to that BIOS folder you created and tell it to use this directory. And now you can click on BIOS selection and choose from your various BIOS files available. This is my PS2 Fats BIOS file. This is my PS2 Slim's BIOS file. I'm still not sure why it says it's Japanese, but is what it is. And then this top one right here is the PS2 BIOS file from within the PS3 firmware. So if you only have one BIOS file, it's just gonna show you the one that you have, but I do have these three different options available. So I'm just gonna use my PS2 FAT BIOS file personally. And now we have the option of enabling or disabling fast boot. I recommend leaving this one checked for a number of reasons. For one, it removes region checks. So you can use any PS2 BIOS file for any region's games. And two, it just makes it go a lot quicker. And then for the third reason, it is mandatory to have that checked if you are using that PS3 firmware PS2 BIOS file. It will not work if you do not have fast boot enabled. But with our BIOS directory configured, let's go ahead and move on and configure our other directories before diving into gameplay. So that way we don't have to worry about it later and losing certain settings or anything like that. So press your right bumper to head over to the memory card settings here. This is gonna be our save directories and we want this on USB so we never have to worry about losing our saves. So memory card directory, select this. And once again, do the parent directory thing until you get to the root directories listing. Go to your USB drive. XBSX2 folder, find your saves folder and tell it to use this directory. Once that's set, just press right bumper again until you get to the folder settings options here. And just start moving all of your folders over to USB. So if you created the cache folder on USB, you could do that one first.
And with all of your folder locations changed, I like to restart the program just to make sure they take effect. So just press your guide button on the Xbox and then you can just quit out of XBSX 2.0 and then just relaunch it. And then you can confirm everything took effect by going into your settings menu and go back over to those folders and see that they're all still pointing to USB. Perfect. So with everything finally set, we are ready to launch into our first PS2 game so you can head into your games list and then just launch up any title of your desire. And there we go, PS2 games up and running on our Xbox Series X and S. Now at any time during gameplay, you could press your start and back buttons to bring up the end game menu and this is how you could do things like changing discs as well as closing out of your game to switch to a different title as well as switch to the software renderer for games that require it, but do remember that software renderer is capped at native resolution. So by default, XBSX 2.0 is running at a native three times up res, so that way your games are gonna look pretty good right off the bat and you can just enjoy playing them. Controls are set automatically for one player, so there is quite a bit more that we could set up, but for the purposes of this part of the video, we are going to be done. So thank you so much as always for watching this video. I hope it helps you get your XBSX2 2.0 install up and running. Be sure to check out the other parts of our XBSX2.0 coverage to get further setup steps like HD texture packs, online play, just different controller configurations and all the good stuff that you might be interested in. But here at the end, I do have a couple of big favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, depending on how much you like this tutorial, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content always coming your way and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can check out that join button here on YouTube or check out the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing all of this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current backers. Thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going. You are the truest of champs. Couldn't do it without you. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, y'all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.